That's not how you do it. Lost it. I'm just being careful. We like heck we do. Give me that thing. Now. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Blasted blisters! I blazes. just can't bloody believe I, it. Uh, that's what you get for working with fumblers. I <clears> told you. <throat> we should fire be spark. careful. What? Now, who the heck are you? Can't an old man have a moment to himself? Um, blazes, you I just me. can't bloody believe Master, it. Don't you remember? Oh, right. Joseph the Scrounger. So, why are you here? Had any luck? Just spar. And yeah, we did find something. I... Suggest you first of all tell me when I allowed you to drag your drinking mates up here. Do you need me to explain the meaning of the words highly and confidential to you? I'm sure there's a lot you can explain to me, but let's save that for later. This particular fellow over here needs your help, to be frank. Arcane fever. Is that so? And what exactly has that got to do with me? Let the Keepers and their holy rituals take care of it. What is it with the costume, anyway? This man's magic is different, my sir. Just feel his aura and you'll see it. Plus, he's from Nero, just as you are. Uh, well, all right then, for nostalgia's sake. I really hope you're not wasting my time, though. Working with these religious buffoons is bound to make any rational thinking person go bonkers. Anyway, that chair over there. Take a seat, and I'll have a look at that fever of yours. All right, then. This will tickle a little. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. This aura does feel different. Complex, somehow, and... Mm, powerful. And do you really want to tell me you've only recently discovered that talent of yours? With that aura, I'm surprised that you haven't turned into an Obaya by now. Hmm. Fine, fine. I, I, well, that is, we will help you. But first, tell me everything. How you got that magic, and how you met that scrounger. Hmm, I see. Regarding this vision thing, I think that your mind simply played a trick on you there. Not that it's much of a surprise, considering what you've been through. Actually, you were quite lucky that the sudden outburst of your glance didn't blow your head right off. Wherever you look, where is this supposed to look? Oh, uh, by all that's holy, I won't start playing your tutor now. If you don't know about the basic functioning of magic, then read something from Balador Goldenstein. He's... The glance on the sea of eventualities. Alongside, but apart from the reality we're in right now, exist countless other realities in which some events have different outcomes, so to speak. A version of this very same room, for example, with the very same people in it, only that Meister Firespark's beard is on fire. And what defines an arcanist, someone capable of magic, is that he or she can see those other realities and let parts of them come true. Well, look at that, Jasper. You surprise me. That's what I'm being paid for. How powerful an arcanist is depends on three factors. How far away are the eventualities that he can see, how well he can bring parts of them into our reality, and finally, how well his mind can handle seeing other realities simultaneously with ours. Lighting a candle is easier than calling a meteor from the sky, to speak plain in Al, but as I said, read Goldenstein if you're interested in the topic. I'm not going to waste any time with lectures. Well, that's probably a sign that you should go easier on the booze. Skill, whether of physical or magical nature, isn't gained through touching some stones, but through hard work and discipline. Even though this screwball Endrelean talk of paths and predeterminations tries to tell us otherwise. Let's hope he knows what he's Ah, well, if that's what you want to believe, go for it. I, in any case, have never come across such a phenomenon in over 50 years of studying magic. And now we should... It all begins with the dreams. What the? 
blasted, blistering blazes. Does this room look like the bosom of a whore to you? Or what makes you think you can go around touching anything you get your fingers on? These documents are confidential for heck's sake. I knew it was a mistake to hire a thug like you. Lashery always had a weakness for- Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember you telling me something about dreams that led you and Teal'or Renthiel that here, didn't you, my sir? Wherever you look- And you told me that in this vision this of yours, the veiled woman said this. It all begins with the dreams. What? Is that true? Oh. Then, this near-death experience you had before you woke up on the shore. Tell me again, what exactly? Did you see in it? A room? Hmm. Well, this... this is strange, indeed. Anyway, for now all that matters is that we get that magic of yours under control. Whatever you clairvoyance back there is of no use to us if you're dead as a doornail in a couple of months. Well, that's usually a plodding process. The fever you feel is a result of your mind not being able to handle all of these possibilities, so to speak. The ritual the Endraleans practice to get the glance under control is called the journey to the water. Put frankly, it means one year of hour-long meditation, bland food, and abstinence from anything that makes life worth living. In due time, the Arcanist then learns to filter these other realities from ours, and the fever gets less and less. Anyhow, luckily enough, we Neremis know of a way to quicken that process. A shortcut, if you will. I'm not capable of performing it, but another one of us oh, is. Her name is Lashery, and you should seek her out as soon as possible. There is indeed, and this reason is called ignorance. The Order's rituals haven't changed since the Lightborn slipped out of their cradles, and the Keepers do their best to keep anything progressive out of their country. But please, if you're up for a year of austerity and stern-faced Magisters scolding you, go for it. I really don't care. She's currently in a ruin called Old Rationgrad, not far from Ark. Just tell her that I sent you. Ah, give me that map of yours. Okay, now you'd have to be a total idiot to miss it. I recommend leaving for the ruin straight away. And you, Joseph, you're going to come with me and show me what your trip to the Sun Coast brought forth. Hopefully, more than a bottle of honey wine and a hangover. Where is this supposed to lead? Quite a character, isn't he? But I like him somehow. Here, I owe you this for your help back in Riverville. Uh, and in case you're in the mood for a mug of ale and a good chat, just drop by the Dancing Nomad in the Stranger's Quarter. I'll get myself a room there for the time being. With all that said, good luck mastering your magic, my friend. I'll see you around. Oh, yes. Guess what? There is. Some people just don't get the meaning of the word reliability. Huh. You're not from the Order, are you? Then I wonder what the blazes you're doing here. But, fine. Who am I to reject a helping hand? Elia, the novice who was assigned to me. She's supposed to help me transcribe these Pyrian tomes the Grand Master is so obsessed about. But two days ago, she simply vanished. If I were to guess, I'd say she's strolling around enjoying herself somewhere in the Nobles' Quarter. I'd go look myself, but I'm lucky if I get to breathe within all this work. Go find her, and tell her to get her bloody ass up here and help me. If you do that, it won't be to your disadvantage. Walk blessed, my friend. You look disheartened. And I have just the right thing for you. A visit to our gallery. Dozens of beautiful paintings by different artists, each of them a treat for the eye. Come now, for tomorrow you may not have a chance. No? I thought so. Then have a nice day. Well, probably because I'm not. 
My husband thinks running around the city and talking to every peasant who crosses my path will help us get our gallery running again. But that's just idiotic. Oh, really? What makes you say that? It's not like our country is ruled by a group of antiquated conservative clerics who care as little about art as they care for the latest trend in Calais and fashion. But no, you're right. It is unusual. And even a narrow-minded country like Enderal has artists. And those artists need a place to show their work. Which is just what we do. Uh, that's one way to put it. Truth be told, if the Golden Sickle doesn't decide to leave a barrel full of coin on our doorstep tomorrow, we won't be able to pay rent much longer. Especially now that my esteemed mother has decided to play hermit. <laughs> wow. Listen to me. A month ago, I would have been too proud to admit this. Now I shouted at a complete stranger. She's a painter. Our best-selling painter, to be precise. Some people even came from other countries to see your portraits. At least before the war. Hmm, it's hard to describe. She's portrayed half of Ark's nobility by now. At least that's what it feels like. And she does it. The paintings are just so... intense. I don't know how else to put it. That's why people are willing to pay a fortune for them. It's crazy if you think about it. Well, what I said. For months, she has not reacted to our letter, nor sent one herself. And what's worse, she hasn't sent us any new paintings. Which is one of the reasons why this place isn't going so well. And in case you wonder why we just don't visit her, my mother was always a little... special. And where she resides reflects that. The Dark Valley. You'd do that. That's... Uh, quite the offer, to be honest. A word of warning in advance. I cannot pay you. That is, unless you're interested in a painting from Prince Myth. But I warn you, they're as bad as his poems. A little detour in a place swarming with undead eager for your blood. Right. I hope you know what you're doing. I really do. But still, I guess I'm too selfish to decline your offer. It's worth a try. My mother and I. We don't exactly have a... Uh, good relationship. But still, I need to know she's alright. You said you travel a lot, so you have a map with you, right? Show me. So, there you go. That's where her hut should be. At least approximately. Good luck, and... Uh, thanks. Sensual and sweet as sin, their bodies touch my tender skin. Mmm! Oh, yummy! Tastes yes? like cherries! What? What the... I... I beg your pardon? But... By the righteous path! This is incredible! I... I I've never heard anything like this before! S tell me, my friend. Where did you learn this? Who taught you poetry? <sighs> Blazes, you're self-taught. Malthus truly did bless you with talent. Tell me, uh, may I interpret your poem? It's, it's just I... I have to. Hmm, well then, I... I hope this is not too much of a leap. But does your first line, the, the one with the dancing elder between fire and ice, deal with the socio-sexual isolation of old people in feudal societies? I, I may be wrong, but that was the first thought that came to my head. No, no, not at all. I was particularly moved by how you used onomatopoeia in line four and six. Do these... Brutal noises at the end of each verse uh, symbolize the hedonistic, violent way of life among the common people who have absolutely no regard for the lonely man. Hmm, phew. Well, that's a tough one. Uh, to me, it sounds like the inner voice of a murderer. Yes, exactly. Here, he celebrates his bloodthirsty way of life. 
In the fangs of violence, my heart laughs. <laughs> and then, suddenly, justice ends him, which is once again conveyed through those guttural noises. <laughs> and I have to say, how you use the uneven number of verses as a metaphor for the discord that results from such a lifestyle is nothing short of brilliant. If that's what you meant by it, of course. You did, didn't you? <sighs> well, you know what? They wouldn't. The common people, they don't even understand when I tell them I'm a poet. Poet, they ask? What kind of profession is that? So now I simply tell them I'm an innkeep. That is something they are able to grasp with their limited intellect. Easy answers. That's what people long for. But you know what? I would rather die hungry than become one of those soulless potboiler artists who make a fortune off their stupid stories. Like uh, Jonas Schmeid does. Do you know him? Mundane rubbish. That's all he writes, but you'll find it on every bookshelf. It's a disgrace. Pure and simple. <laughs> what? What kind of question is that? How can something that so many people like not be rubbish? Of course. Not everyone has been blessed with an artist's intellect, you know. There are two kinds of writers. Small minds who give the common people fodder that helps them feel smart, and true artists who want more from life. Those who create, with no greed for gold and fame, bound solely by the calling of the muse. Of course I am. I wish it weren't true, but it is. <sighs> if only there were more people like us. So, tell me. How are you holding up? It must have been quite the whirlwind. Yesterday, a refugee from another country, and now a prodigy with a magic great enough to impress old Bushybeard. Good luck with that. I'm quite curious to see how things keep on with you. You're different. I noticed that the time we met. Anyhow, tell me, what do you make of this country now that you've had some time to look around? I figure it must be quite the change from Nerim. Shoot! <laughs> yeah, I can picture that. You know, this is exactly the reason why I love inns so much. The sky can rain fire out there. In here, you'll always meet laughter and good humor. Not to mention all the good-looking men and women. Absolutely. Though I think I've seen enough of this place by now. Of Enderol, I mean. There's a ship sailing for Kile next morning. And as it seems, it will be the last one for quite some time to come. Who knows? Maybe they still have a cabin to spare for a handsome treasure hunter. <laughs> oh well. This entire thing was more a coincidence than planned anyhow. The Order needed someone with skill and discretion, and I was around. End of story. I never intended to stick around for much longer. Heck, <laughs> me as an ambassador of the Holy Order? Could you imagine that? Not one step further, O oh fair maiden. Drop your garment so we may both bathe in Malthus's holy light. Hmm. Actually, not that bad, don't you think? Oh, you're too kind. But you know, at the end of the day, I guess I'd probably lack both the pathos and the idealism for such a profession. You know, I'm aware of how these esteemed keepers up there talk about sellswords like me. I could save 30 virgins from a myrid on Rampage. At the end of the day, they'd always say I did it for the money, because I wanted to bet the women, or whatever. I'm driven by inferior motives. While no matter what their actions end in, they are good guys, because they do things for the right reasons. If only they'd understand that it's results that matter, not intentions. What does the wise hermit say? Nothing is of less importance to the saved than the reason for their rescue. The only difference between a mercenary like me and a holy warden is that I'm at least aware of the fact that I do what I do for myself and no one else. I'm trying to say that all those heroes and self-declared messiahs are no better than everyone else. In the end, we are all selfish because we always act in accordance to what we think we have to be like. So yes, maybe the keeper saves the farmer from the bandits. 
But at the end of the day, he does it because he sees himself in a certain light. You know, the funny thing is that a lot of times, it's especially those who think of themselves driven by a higher purpose who are the really dangerous ones. They don't understand what drives them, and that makes them easy to manipulate. The only thing left to do for the capable hate monger or tyrant is to somehow combine his own ambitions with the mental image of this person. And presto, you've got your perfect puppet, only waiting to dive into the next hail of arrows for their honor, their religion, or whatever they thought of this time. <laughs> it's just so idiotic, you know? The world would be a much better place if everyone could just acknowledge that the only reason we're here is that we want to be happy. Yeah, seek bliss and avoid pain, as the wise hermit likes to say. And believe me, once you realize that that's how people just work, life is a lot better. Oh, yeah, I do. And this goal is called surviving. And if possible, to be able to enjoy a good glass of wine or an exciting night from time to time. Oh, places, you make it sound so dramatic. Doing something for your own sake doesn't make you selfish. But yeah, basically that's it. I don't know, call it a feeling. But if there is such a thing as a universal point to our lives, then I'm pretty sure we won't find it within the pre-digested philosophies or religions most people believe in. And hey, I'd be the last one to reject this great truth if she were to knock on my door naked and tits jiggling. But until then, I'd rather try and find my own answers. Really? I was half expecting you to throw insults at me. That's what people usually do when I tell them that. But I guess life is full of surprises. <sighs> anyway, I'll take my leave now. I very much enjoyed our talk. But the ship to Kilae leaves before the first Cox Crow tomorrow, and I want some more time to think about it. Well, it most recently gained a good-looking Aramis man. Maybe that'll make up for when I leave. Keep your chin up. Where are you headed? How about pirates? What is there to tell? They're beautiful animals, majestic and wild, and dangerous if you're lucky enough to run into an untamed one. In the time before the Blood Moon Revolt, a long time ago, tame pirates like this one here was a really rare sight. Nowadays, though, they're pretty common, at least here in Enveril. Pity, somehow. Ah. I guess that sounds stupid, but I sometimes long for the times my grandfather lived in. Being a Myra Warden was far more prestigious back then, and even feared with sublime or keepers. Nowadays, well, you can guess, riding a Myra has become as ordinary as riding a mule. But, uh, who am I to complain? Oh, well, that's hard to explain. They communicate by clicking sounds. I, as a Warden, have been trained to hear them, but you probably can't. And through those clicking sounds, I also tell them where you want to go, before you mount them. Obviously, that only works for routes that the Myret already knows by heart. You didn't come to rob a helpless woman, did you? If so, think twice. These guardians were only a mousetrap, metaphorically speaking. Did she now? Hmm, no, you don't seem to be lying. Well then, come on in. Who am I to dismiss a friend of my daughter? Sorry again for the Guardians. I have reason to be cautious, let's put it that way. These parts of the land aren't exactly the coves of Kilae, as you undoubtedly have noticed already. Here we are. Welcome to my workshop. I would offer you something to drink, but you look as if you want to get straight to the point. So, tell me. What troubles my dear Erica so much that she affords herself a mercenary? As far as I know, this gallery of hers isn't exactly a gold pit. Ah, which roughly translates as she needs new pictures because she has sold all the others. Poor girl. Business doesn't go so well, does it? She and her beloved Eshnu with their worried faces over a little pile of pennies? Oh, I can imagine it all too well. So let's make this short. The reason I haven't delivered has nothing to do with Erica. 
I have other problems to take care of at the moment, as I hinted at before. A robbery, to call the child by its name. One that has cost me a very precious piece. And... Hmm. Actually, it's quite convenient that you're here. What do you say? You get me that picture back, and I'll do my best to send Eric a new paintings as soon as possible. Oh, certainly. A good one. They were a young couple dressed in sinfully costly clothing and said they came to be portrayed. I should have gotten suspicious that they had no escort, but age makes you careless, I suppose. Anyway, I was just painting the pal when I felt a hit on my head. When I woke up, they were gone, together with a very dear painting of mine. I assumed they ran for the Throatstone Quarry, at least judging from the trail, but it was already dark and despite all my magic, I have no desire to make acquaintance with hordes of Lost Ones or Vatiras. That's your job. Hmm, I believe it is the question every successful artist asks himself sooner or later, isn't it? I have two answers for it. Number one, it is this place. The blood that was spilled here. It is as if a part of the body's soul soaked into the ground with it. These souls have become part of the forest now, as bones eventually become soil again. That, combined with the certain talent I possess reflects in my paintings, they have... essence, if you can call it that. That's the romantic explanation. The other one is that the Ark Nobles simply love to look at themselves, and I have a hand for portraits. Good painters are hard to find. Oh, there are many reasons, none of which you would understand. Let's leave it at that. Oh, I get that a lot. One vial of child's blood, crushed dust maggot stingers, and dawn flower extract. Well mixed up and regularly applied to the skin. I can only recommend it. Ugh, of course I am. Jokes aside, thank you for the compliment. Hermit's life or not, everyone likes to hear such things once in a while. I guess my looks just run in the family. I'm sure you will. Take care of yourself. I'll be right here. Wait! Wait! You're not one of the bandits, are you? You have to help me. No! That... that is... you are. But I'm a person. Only that she trapped me in here. This wild mage, this witch, Andrasta, she did this. Leaf, my companion, she managed to knock her out and flee with me. But then there were these bandits. And they... They killed her. Oh, my Malthus. My Leaf. They killed her. Well, you're talking to a painting, aren't you? I'm sorry. I... I'm just done with this. Andrasta. This is what she does, you know. She takes away people's essence and locks it inside these paintings of hers. This is why they feel so... vibrant. Or whatever you want to call it. Normally you wouldn't be able to talk with me. But Leaf stopped her before she could trap me completely. Still, not soon enough. Leaf and I were... were mercenaries. Witch hunters from Arasio. Talgul, to be precise. We heard that... well, that things are turbulent here in Enderol at the moment. So we thought we would make passage and try our luck here. One of those sublime from Ark. He didn't want to tell us his name because he was afraid. At first I thought he was exaggerating, but now I know better. Andrasta. She hates Ark, you know. She hates the nobles more than anything in this world. She says they are decadent and care about nothing other than their pennies and their latest haircut, while people have to live like rats in the Undercity. She's a wild mage. A psionic, to be precise. No. She waits for them to come to her. Do you know what people pay for a painting by her? A worker could buy a house with that money. 
And she says whoever is willing to waste that much money on vanity doesn't deserve to live. Nobody notices anything different in the beginning, you know? The people she paints, they behave like always. But in reality, they are no more than lost ones. Puppets without a will who go about their daily business. And then, usually a couple of moons after the painting, they die. Suicide. A heart attack. Nothing anyone could trace back to Andrasta. That's what's so horrible about it. In any case, our employer, he somehow found out, and he hired me and Leaf to put an end to her atrocities once and for all. I suppose so, yes. I don't know how it works, and truth be told, I don't want to. I just want to get out of here and make her pay. We pretended we were customers. She painted me first. Leaf noticed too late what was happening, but she managed to overthrow her. Then she took the painting and ran. Ah. We would have both gotten away if it hadn't been for those damn highwaymen. Oh, Leaf. I... I just can't believe it. Please. You... You have to bring me to Andrasta's house and kill her. I think I know how I can break the spell and get back into my body. But she needs to be dead for that. Please. Thank you. We have to do this for Leaf. Now, if it isn't my new friend, find anything? Oh, wow. Such drastic claims. And who told you this, I wonder? The lost king of the fabled empire of old Aranath? Or just one too many bottles of rum? Cut the act. He knows everything. Just make short work of her, will you? She will try and manipulate you with every word that she says. I know her. <sighs> All right, fine. No point in beating around the bush any longer, I suppose. So... Why should I begin? Yes, our Arizalian friend inside that painting is right. I have those nobles on my conscience, quite a lot of them. And you know what? I don't feel regret. Every one of those bastards deserved to die. Ugh, do you think I picked this place as my workshop by coincidence? This forest, it is the proof of how rotten this country really is. Thousands of men and women slaughtered because they followed a woman who dared to say that this oh-so-holy society is nothing but a lie. The path, holy verses, they are nothing but mental shackles so that the poor stay poor and the rich stay rich. Who are we to doubt what fate the path has chosen for us? Malthus alone knows our destiny. You notice something? That shaveling talk for each shit or die. Balrak, what are you doing? Just kill her, damn it. Do you have the slightest idea how many people this wench has murdered? Says the witch hunter from Eraziel. Tell me, were you also there at the Purge, 8212? How many magically gifted girls and boys of the free folk did you kill, only because they dared to worship the gods of their ancestors rather than your civilized Lightborn? I hope your employers paid well for that. Just kill her for fuck's sake. Kill her. I hate it when people shout in my house. I know a few dead nobles aren't going to change anything, but at least it's a little justice for those poor souls who have to pay for their decadence in the Undercity. Do you really want me to go into detail? This witch hunter, as he styles himself, is nothing more than a murderer. He and his order were part of a massacre, which puts even what the order did to the Blood Moon rebels to shame. But of course, he will tell you a different story. They always do. Exactly.
Exactly. Nice and clean, and nobody ever suspects a thing. Well, at least that's what I thought. I must have gotten careless. Well, as I see it, there are two ways of ending this. Number one, you give me the painting. I take care of our talking friend in there, and we both live happily ever after. Number two, you make a mistake. Correct. Probably, but we'll see about that. I'm old. And, truth be told, it doesn't feel as satisfying anymore. As you wish. By the Prophet's ass! One second later and I would have been scraping your remains off the floor. What in blazes are you doing here, anyway? <sighs> Let's put it this way. I know how to hide when I don't want to be seen. And concerning the explosion, you stepped right into a Kyrenian dust crystal. Get a little too close and wait a little too long, and you'll have your ass blown around your ears by an explosion that would put any cannon to shame. Lashiri? <laughs> oh my. The fellow really isn't one for names, is he? I'm Lashari, but never mind that. At least it proves you're not lying. Anyhow, I hope you're not the backup I asked for. I was hoping for someone more, um, impressive. No offense. <laughs> Is that so? Hmm. Indeed. You have some uncontrolled magic inside you. <laughs> and quite a lot of uncontrolled magic. Not bad. I've never felt anything like this before. Very well. If Constantine insists, I will perform the ritual on you. But it'll have to wait, since I'm up to my neck in this shit, as you've probably noticed. Short version or long version? Which do you prefer? Fine. I suppose you already know that we... That is me, my assistant, two arcanists, and four keepers are here to do research on... Well, on something, which is exactly what we've done these past weeks. But, as I went upstairs to get something a couple hours ago, I suddenly heard screaming and the clanging of metal coming from downstairs. As I looked for cover, I saw these two shapes in red robes vanishing into the lower parts of the ruin. I have no idea who they are or why they're here, but to me, they look like mercenaries. Anyway, fact is, my esteemed Indralean colleagues and my assistant are still down there, together with our research, and I want them back. And before you ask, yes, you can help me. You'll have to, actually, if you want me to tame your magic. I wouldn't have a chance fighting the mercenaries by myself, but the two of us might be able to do it, provided you can defend yourself, which I'm quite sure you can. What do you say? Are you ready? Oh, that's hard to explain. But part of it is finding the answer to the universal question, why do some people have the nerve to ask irrelevant questions when shit is going down around them? After we've cleaned up the mess, we can do this whole who are you and what are you doing here thing if you want to. But this really isn't the time. No idea. But I don't think there are more than a dozen. Also, they don't anticipate any resistance, which is to our advantage. Fine, then follow me. And keep your weapons ready. I think I just heard footsteps down there. I don't believe it. Their orders. My assistant, Sev. It seems he's the reason these fuckers managed to take us by surprise. <sighs> Save it for Sev when I shove the staff up his ass and fire a thunderbolt. Shit, can you smell that? That's fire. So, these guys really are trying to destroy our research. <sighs> we have to do something. You're adept at magic, right? Take this spell and use it to put out the fires. If I'm right, the mercenaries are trying to destroy the stone fragments. We have to stop them. You take the lower part of the ruin. Try to save as many stones as you can. I'll take the upper part, and when it's all done, we'll meet here again. Oh, and one more thing. If you should find my assistant Sev down there, try to take him alive and bring him to me. I want to take care of him myself, okay? Then let's get going. Well, I'll be damned. That's what I call good timing. I take it you were successful? What about the fragments? Did you save them? 
All of them? Call me a pregnant Lyran. You really are good at what you do. You won't regret it, I swear. What about Sev? Did you find him? Fuck. The little shit. I was hoping I could make him tell us who's behind all this. <sighs> well, whatever. No use crying over spilt milk, I guess. What's your name, anyway? Amidst all this, we didn't have time for formalities. You're pleased? Well, <laughs> that's good to hear. I actually had the feeling that I was a little rough on you. Sorry for that, really. Sometimes I just have a short fuse. <sighs> anyway, let's talk about the reason you're here. For starters, tell me how you managed to get the old ranter to trust you. That doesn't happen very often. I've got time. Uh-huh. So, you're saying that you learned all this? The magic, the swordplay, in such a short time? That's... fascinating, to say the least. And these visions? If I understand correctly, you foresaw the death of the two apothecary? <laughs> it does indeed. But hey, who am I to judge? Here you are, the mysterious stranger who appeared out of thin air and, without much fuss, took out an entire group of swords. And even better, now you tell me that these skills come from studying magic for only a couple of weeks, and that you can see the future. You certainly are full of s Shit. <sighs> Not you, sorry. I mean, I, I just had a strange thought. But no, that would be crazy. Way too unlikely. Well, I'd like to speak freely, but I'm bound to my agreement with the Holy Order. However, I will tell Constantine and old Aranthiel about my theory. And you, you will probably have to be patient until the latter decides to put you in the picture. Sorry. But if my idea is correct, <laughs> then we'll be in a position to really kick ass. Anyway, hold still for a moment. Ready? All right, let's do this. Don't worry, it'll just tickle a bit. Fuck! Uh, are you alright? That wasn't on purpose. Really. Sorry, as I said, I didn't mean to do that. I have no idea what just happened. The ritual isn't exactly harmless, but normally you shouldn't feel more than a weak tickle at most, regardless of how it goes down. But, hmm, maybe this has something to do with the strangeness of your aura. I already said this, but it's so different. It's hard to explain. Somehow complex and cold, maybe. But hey, I'm probably just out of practice. It worked, and that's what matters. Your fever will now settle down to an endurable level, and maybe even vanish if you're careful. And now, I suggest you return to Constantine. I will get the stones to safety in the meantime. You need anything else? If not, see you later. We're going to meet again. I can feel it. Well, put simply, they're supposed to protect us. But old Aranthiel will tell you more about it later. Take care.